Hey guys, for today's tips and tricks video, I wanted to talk about trade fragging. So most of you guys might think trade killing is just as simple as your teammate dies, you get the exchange kill, an eye for an eye, that's it. You know, one for one, two for two, three for three trades. As long as one of you guys die, you kill whoever killed your teammate, you get a nice even exchange. That's the basic gist of it. But we need to go more in depth. So a lot of people might think that getting a trade kill means entry fragger is first, second person in is dick to ass with him. As soon as the entry fragger dies, the second guy gets the, the trade kill. Sometimes that actually leads to you getting killed and, and losing the engagements because of that. And what I can't stress enough is sometimes you might want to just cut your losses. If you lose a teammate and the enemy gets away, sometimes that's better than the then the alternative, which could be two of you guys die and you let the enemy get away. So you don't want to be in that situation where two of you guys die and the enemy gets away because that's just the ultimate, just worst feeling ever. If you get, if one of you guys dies, you can still recover from this. You have the information, maybe uh, you know exactly where your opponent is and he's pinned in a certain location. You can use grenades and molotovs to flush him out. You can post on him. You have other resources such as round time. You need to be disciplined and not be impulsive with all your plays. If you're just thinking about, oh, I know the enemy's there, I gotta go run and kill him. If you have these instincts, these impulses just driving your gameplay, you're not a really disciplined player you're pretty one-dimensional and it's going to cost your team a lot of rounds. So <clears throat> sometimes creating a little bit of a buffer zone between you and your teammate is something that you're going to want to do so that you can ensure that you get the trade kill because in the end it's the trade kill that's like the main thing as a terrorist as opposed to trying to just like frag out because that might cost you rounds. So I'm going to play this round out and uh, what we'll see in just a few moments is a bad way to uh, go about getting a trade kill and a good way as well, both in the same round. So it's a really good round to talk about. So uh, as I let this round play out a little bit, um, what we're going to see happen is Skadoodle is going to get an opening pick at port side middle. And my teammates and I are all like top of middle and swags and boiler. So we know that port side's clear unless they're tucked in, in the kitty corner. It's pretty much clear. Swag's in the boiler fighting everyone at porch. Skadoodle's still holding left, uh, sorry, port side of middle and get right here at art side so I'm gonna play this out a little bit and uh, pause it and just talk about what's going on so we get that kill and because we have two eyes trained on port side we're not gonna smoke off mid and we're gonna come up and clear it so I'm the first one up I'm the role of the entry fragger right now and my job is to clear art side right now so as I'm coming up Garrett's in a great position he just lays me out I didn't even have a chance to react now what we see with AZK right here is that AZK is like dick to ass with me so as soon as I die, I don't even have time to tell my teammates, get right's cubby. By the time I'm dead and I can call get right's cubby, AZK is already in get right's crosshair and he's already being shot at. But look at what happens. Because AZK didn't give this buffer zone, what happened was he was he didn't know where I died from. And because get right had a silence M4, uh, AZK looked actually to the port side and kind of hesitated a little bit before finally realizing that Get Right's in the cubby. And by the time AZK realized that, Get Right's killed him. So Get Right got these two kills here, which is pretty huge for him because now it just went from a four versus five to a four versus three, which is a great situation for his team to be in. Now, had AZK given me like a little bit of a buffer zone so that I call Get Right's cubby and then AZK gets that information, then he peeks towards Get Right. Azik is going to have a better time with that engagement because he knows exactly where to look. He doesn't have to worry about like flicking his mouse over to the right because he thinks that he got shot from porch side. He's going to come staring exactly where get right is and he's going to take that one versus one aim duel and be really confident in that fight. So get right's able to get these two kills, but now now we say get right's in cubby. What happens here is he's got nothing to bail him out. He's got no smokes, no flashes, no teammates. So he's just pinned here. And then what happens here now is Days is able to get the trade kill because he uses a Molotov to get him out of this position. And as Get Right's running out of this position, Days is able to get this kill. And then look what happens here. Days is set up. He's just killed a person. I got to get rid of my console. Days has just killed a person at, at Archside. And he's primed. He's ready. There's no one at the left. The only place 
Jace has to look at is right here. Why? Because the left side's clear, he killed the get right guy. This is the only place Daze has to look. What happens? Get right's teammate comes and tries to get the trade kill, and Daze is staring right at him. Daze gets another kill. So Freiburg just did the same mistake that AZK just did in terms of just run out and try to just like try to make something happen instead of just saying, you know what, I gotta cut my losses. We have the information, we know where they are, let's just cut these losses and just move on with the rest of the round. So now we swing it again. It went from our power favor to nip favor back to our power favor. And the round's not even over yet, where we're actually going to see even more fuckery happen. So here it's a three versus two. Round's still playing out, taking our time. 45 seconds left on the clock. Um, Swag gets information on one of the players in the bomb site. We know Fifth Lauren's in the site, just hiding here. So we're going to watch from Skadoodle's point of view. Smoke off Moto, that's a huge, huge thing. We know if Florence trapped in the site. Instead of just, you know, we have 40 seconds left on the clock. You don't have to rush anything. You know where this guy is. We don't know where the other guy is. Let's get good positions and let's flush him out and try to like get good positions. What happens? He's, he starts rushing up. He starts getting impatient and complacent and he ends up dying. Daisy's is in a perfect position here to to just hold for moto, we could have a guy just try to uh, plant the bomb. Anything can happen. Like, there's so many things he can do. We have so much time on the clock, and Skidrill just rushed that situation. He ended up dying, um, and then Days rushes out to try, try to get the trade, and then he dies, and then Swag's left in a one versus two, and then all of a sudden the round falls apart. So, and even at the end of it, there was 30 seconds left. There's no reason to rush anything. So, getting trade kills isn't always about instantly going and getting that reaction and getting the kill. It's sometimes about being patient, using that information to know exactly how you can position yourself and aim so that you win that engagement when it finally comes. And remember, your opponent doesn't always know which angle you're going to be peeking from, but if your teammate's giving you the information of where your opponent is, you have a pretty good idea of where you need to aim. And that's, gonna, that's half the battle. If you uh, go back to my how to aim video, Knowing where you need to aim is and be positioned is half the battle in aiming, where you don't have to just start flicking around wildly. Anyways, I hope this video helped. If it did, remember to subscribe, and I'll do more videos like this. Peace.